Hello, and welcome to the Grand Cinema Hotel, a podcast hosted by three friends who love cinema. I'm Oliver, and I'm joined today by my two co-hosts, Gus and Nate. Tonight, you'll be staying in Room 111, Benedetta, the latest film by controversial filmmaker Paul Verhoeven. So go ahead, get comfortable, and throw on that Do Not Disturb sign as we jump into Benedetta. Benedetta! What's going on, everybody? Shout out to all my nuns out there. (laughs) Um, We have a first on the podcast. This will be the uh, first time we're doing two videos in one week. Uh, We just kind of, it was a special week. We had seen Benedetta and we felt like there was no way we can't talk about this movie. (laughs) The power of this movie compelled me. (laughs) So here we are with Benedetta. Um, Something from above told me we need to make this episode. Yeah, we were were compelled. (laughs) So yeah, here we are, um, midweek episode, first time we're doing that. But uh, yeah, it's the week of the Pauls. Yeah, Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, Paul Verhoeven. What's up guys, Gus here. Um, Benedetta. Does not give a fuck. Yeah, I, dude, for real. Holy fuck. Wow. We <laughs> came across this movie when we were watching... What were we watching? Was it The Last Duel or was it Come On, Come On? I think it was Come On, Come On. Because I, it was one of the times your brother was with us, right? And yes. I think he saw the trailer as well. Yeah. So we, we were only made aware of this movie not that long ago, but... Holy shit, like, right? Literally, yeah, literally two <laughs> wow. weeks ago, had never heard anything about it, and then all of a sudden it was just on our radar, and then, yeah, we saw it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me and Ro had seen it one day before you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think five minutes into the movie, I realized that you had made a fatal error. <laughs> yeah, and not going <laughs> I that like, day. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, I wish Nate was here, because I know we would have wanted to record the episode the very next day. Because I, I was originally going to see this today. I was oh, gonna, the, yeah, the okay. day That's right true. now that we're recording. Um, but after you guys basically gave it some really high Our praise. Our glowing review. I just, there was no way I couldn't go see it. So I went and saw it. And yeah, holy, uh, holy shit. Yeah, I posted our, uh, me and Rose, like car reaction. That's what I was going to say. Which I think, that was pretty fun. I think we should do more of those. Yeah, I was like, you guys do that. And, that's, and I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's all I was going to say is that that's how we knew this movie was special was that we did that for the first time. Yeah. yeah. It was his idea to be like, I have so much to say right now. You it's know? a straight hot and, take of the movie. I mean, he got you guys with the whole, so like, we, Jesus is, which, uh, Killing snakes in this in this movie, yeah, sex, violence, and Jesus slicing serpents is how I yeah. described it. Like, I don't even know. I had no idea what to expect going into this movie. I was just so blown away by the trailer and what it was trying to do. I wasn't. I wasn't sure. So, yeah, dude. Oh my god. I know you had said you shown this trailer to somebody because they were asking you about movies, and they were like, "This looks tight." I right? did. Yeah, one of my one of my coworkers we were talking about movies, and I was saying how I was going to go see it, and showed him the trailer, and he's like, "Holy shit!" He's they like, make movies like this? crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're out there. Yeah, they really are. I didn't. You say that he asked you like, "How do you yeah, find?" Yeah, he's movies like, "He's like, like how the fuck do you find movies like this?" And um, I don't know. Just kind of. I don't find know, them. but I'm glad I they did. Find right? me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They just kind of yeah. Our lap. The good ones find you. Mm-hmm. It's so happy that we did see this in theaters. Like, yeah. Um, oh. How do you guys feel about Paul Verhoeven in general? Do you find yourself to be a fan? I know he's a very controversial director. I honestly, I like him. I haven't seen all of his work, but I mean, I've seen Starship Troopers, RoboCop, Total Recall, and I. They're now all, you've seen Benedetta. Now I've seen Benedetta, and I've liked them all. They're, the movies seem to be fun. They teeter between satire and. Um, like a serious film, I feel like, and he kind of he really that walks that line, especially in Benedetta. Like, oh yeah, like really, especially really ben. teeters that line so. of going too far too. We're oh like, yeah, is this good? Wait, wait, wait. this is badass. It's like, it's like, <laughs> did, like, did he go too far? Probably. Did it work? Yes. Yes, <laughs> it did. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm, I um, my guess. personal history with Paul Verhoeven is that I've had a long history with the movie Showgirls. <laughs> I know you, you even told that like to me before we knew about Benedetta. So, yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that is a critically panned movie, multiple Razzies, but that movie has a very strong following of people who believe that that's like one of the funniest satires to ever exist. And um, it was Kyle MacLachlan's debut film. No, no, sorry. It wasn't. But it was Kyle MacLachlan, like, fresh off of, like, Dune and Twin Peaks and all those things. And then he was in this. And I believe he refuses to, like, speak on that movie, mm-hmm. Showgirls. And Elizabeth Berkley was in that movie playing, you know, that was, like, before Disney stars used to have their turn into being adults. Like, Elizabeth Berkley kind of pioneered that with Showgirls because she was on Saved by the Bell. And then to be in a movie that's about, um, like, strippers and dancers and yeah. all of that. But 
my parents would let me watch that movie with them when I was a kid, and I never understood why. My parents kind of let me get away with murder when it came to movies. I watched <laughs> anything and everything, and that's how come I have a podcast now, because of my repressed trauma of watching movies like Showgirls. <laughs> here we are talking about this one now. Yeah, and here we are talking about Benedetta. Oh, man. <laughs> but I do like Total Recall. RoboCop is classic. Yeah, Starship um, Troopers is it's so campy. I like it. Like yeah, I, and I, I think that's it. what we're talking about. It's just if you're if you're in on it, then it's for you. You know, if you're willing to just accept it for what can it is. Can you roll with this movie? Yeah, yeah. Benedetta is definitely one yeah. I can roll with. This yeah. movie's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Saying the least. Yeah, honestly. yeah. To say the least. Um. So yeah, I guess let's let's jump into this movie. This uh, the movie is about um. Benedetta. Benedetta. Who, She's a real person. She, yeah, this is based on true events. So um, it's a 17th century nun in Italy, suffers from disturbing religious and erotic visions. She is assisted by a companion, and the relationship between the two women develops into a romantic love affair. Yeah. That's basically pretty surface level what this movie's about. I think it dives into a lot. Um, very funny, very serious at the same time. It, it was a very unique film, I felt like. I want to... Just put a, a, a blanket statement out there that I I do want to do spoilers for this one yeah. because there's so many things I want to talk about yeah. with this movie. So if you haven't seen this and you don't want to be spoiled, go check this movie out if you can. Maybe come back when you've seen it. Definitely come back. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just a general blanket that it's going to be spoilers in this yeah. one. And this, this this movie was a little X-rated, I guess you could say. So, you know, warning on that too. But yeah. If you're not really into vulgar, naughty things, yeah, then, <laughs> maybe this one's not for you. Yeah. But you know, if you want to have your uh, your sen- like your your sensibilities challenged, maybe this is one you want to check out mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, I did before we really get into it. I kind of wanted to talk about the the Catholic Church being pressed about this the church. Movie. The mm, church so hates funny. this film. Of course they do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now seeing it, I understand yeah, why I can, they would I be upset. It but it's it's funny in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> They do this every couple of years, honestly. I mean, the last time I can really remember it is The Passion of the Christ. I know back in the day, Scorsese had this problem with The Last Temptation of Christ because of that movie portraying Jesus in a, like a way of him having a bride. You know, I don't, I guess religious people are against that. Yeah. But <laughs> this movie is pissing off the right people, I guess, yeah. right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I enjoyed it at their expense, I guess. So. Hey, sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Repent for me, I guess, because I enjoyed this one a lot. And sure. Paul sitting here like that, the guy at that meeting, the town meeting, he just puts his hands up. I'm like, what? What did I do? I'm just telling you guys what happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is just facts, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because this was based off a, a book by um, uh, Judas C. Brown. It was called The Immodest Acts and the, uh, the Life of a Lesbian Nun in Renaissance Italy. So, I mean, Benedetta was a real person, and, you know, events of this were, were real. So. Can we talk about why this movie is in French if it's set? In Italy? in Italy makes no sense. I, yeah. But once again, this movie doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I watch a lot of anime, and like one I'm watching right now is set in like Russia, but it's in Japanese, yeah. obviously. So I'm used to it, but this one kind of caught me off guard because I was I had the Italian jokes piled up, ready to go, and I was like, ah, oh, it's a French movie. <laughs> Definitely some give and take with this one. Yeah. But uh, I think just from the start, this movie. Just really reels you in. I know we said it took all of like three, four minutes for me to be like, I'm completely in on yeah. this movie, yes. right? Yep. <laughs> Legitimately, there's like two. There's two things that happen within the first five minutes where I was like, all right, here we go. It's gonna be this kind of movie. Yeah, like we mentioned with the licorice pizza episode, I knew I was in good hands mm-hmm. right right away. Yeah, because I mean, this movie, like, I really just did not know what to expect, and so to kind of get that. Uh, I don't know. I was satisfied. I was like, right, I think my favorite go. part about movies in general is that it doesn't matter if I'm into something or not. I'm willing to watch a movie about anything as long as they make it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> as long as it's well made, honestly. I'll give it a go. I mean, oh, I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm a huge nun movie fan. Oh, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But oh it's my not God. just really something I look into, but I'm willing, for, I'm willing to let any movie wash over me and show me a good time. Yeah, the the one thing I do, this movie was, it was super complete, I felt like. It, like, a lot of the characters had complete arcs. There was a lot of things going on, and, oh, my God, this movie was so ridiculous. Um, Let's talk about the main character, Benedetta, Virginie Afira. Mm -hmm. She worked with uh, Verhoeven on his last movie, Elle. 
Um, she's a powerhouse. She killed it. Right? Yeah. I want, I really want to see her in more stuff. Um, I'm definitely going to seek out and see what other things she's been in and keep an eye on her in the future because she just gives a hell of a performance in this movie. And I don't know if anybody else could do it the way she did. She you know? was uh, so convincing, you mm-hmm. know, in her, in her portrayal of Benedetta. Um, yeah, her and my personal favorite, my my favorite actor in this movie was um, Charlotte Rampling. Yeah. Who played, uh, like, you know, the head sister, the head abbess. They called her the Reverend Mother. Reverend Mother. And she was the Reverend Mother in Dune, mm-hmm. which is like, damn, you picked two gnarly roles this year. <laughs> she, yeah, she just gave such a, such a strong she, performance. She's um, a good actor. I told Ro, yeah, and when we, after we had seen it, I was like, she's just a good actor. And maybe I'm too young to realize that she's always been a good actor but this is these two movies are my introduction to her yeah. and i just told him i was like this just goes to show you that people really were like really good actors back then mm-hmm. and now we're kind of in poverty times <laughs> with some of the actors we have now because even her like it's such a it's such a subtle performance it's not like it's really out there and super uh like bombastic and loud but it's a, such a strong performance in the same way she carried herself in dune there's just like a a sense of like regalness and like royalty yeah, to her, even when she's playing a nun or whether she's playing a Benny Jesuit witch, you know. <laughs> exactly. She demands her respect on screen. Yeah, she does. She really knows how to pull it. And I felt like the last time we had gotten something like that was either Dune and Last Night or Last Night in Soho, or even the mother character in The Last Duel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, That's a good point. <laughs> these older actors are really showing us what's up. This the one year. that got me. Yeah. Um, the Queen and Green Knight. Yeah, the Queen and the Green Knight. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Benedetta, Benedetta, yeah, Benedetta. You can see what we're comparing it to. All the <laughs> yeah. movies. Do we do we hop in this movie now? Yeah, I'm gonna. One last thing that this is easily one of my favorite movies of the year. Oh yeah, and just for it to like like we talk about for it to really come out of nowhere and then just totally like easily top five movies of the year for me right now. Yeah, probably. yeah, yeah. So we have a few more to see, but yeah. I'm pretty sure this is up there. I just I yeah. couldn't believe it. It it was just so it was so everything was done right. Like it was so weird. But, oh, my God. Let's talk about some of the, the themes of this movie before we get into, like, the plot and doing yeah. the spoilers and stuff like that. Because this movie's got so much going on. From my notes, I wrote down that I put themes and ideas. And we got power, corruption, faith, manipulation, leadership, the thin line between good and evil, sexuality, temptation, mm. the, ambigu- the ambiguity of life itself. Exactly. Like, there's <laughs> – and that's what I think you mean by saying it's a complete movie. It's like it just questions everything, you know? Everybody's on trial in this movie, and then it's just a romance movie on yeah. top of all that. Yeah, it's a complicated. It is romance. Very complicated romance movie. One of the uh, one of the themes that I thought was really interesting that he did. I could see why the church is kind of upset about it. Paul took a shot at like the idea of using scripture and Jesus to like towards one's personal gain. Yeah, like people will use a Bible verse against another person to prove that they're right, and they just keep going back and forth. And you can see how the scripture and like religion is twisted and manipulated. And I just thought that was a really cool part of the movie. We recently saw The Eyes of Tammy Faye. I had seen it, and then you had seen it. And I I think you like The Righteous Gemstones as well. I love that show. So you're very familiar with this idea of people using scripture for their own for their game. own personal game. Yeah, I mean, like, we well, see it now all the time. Yep. Fucking Joel Osteen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hiding money in the walls, yeah. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That Pretty shit. sure that's who Danny McBride is based his character off yeah, of, right? For real. <laughs> so just for to see him tackle that and just to see, I mean, like this movie, <laughs> dare I say it, is almost um Satan's alley. <laughs> The movie in the beginning of Tropic Thunder that they kind of like flex with Tobey Maguire and uh, took me a second. I was like, "What is Robert Downey Jr.?" About? But this movie almost is that movie. <laughs> There's almost a shot for shot comparison in that that fake movie Satan's Alley. It's Tobey Maguire, right? Yep. And uh, he reaches for his rosary. Yeah. There's a shot almost identical <laughs> yep. to that in this movie, and it's like <gasps> so just to see like you know like a, a homosexual relationship inside of the church, like. It, like hey, the only time alone. I had ever seen it before was, uh, <laughs> and then throwing on top Satan's of Alley. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then just to see Satan's like Alley. visions of Jesus and like, this movie was insane. <laughs> Is Satan's Alley an innuendo for a butthole? <laughs> <laughs> Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm wondering if that's what that meant. Cause that joke definitely went over my head as a kid. Right. I was like, Oh, that's funny. I guess. But is it? <laughs> yeah, probably. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> oh man. Um, I think the other performer we probably need to mention, uh, there's two more, is the character the character of Bartolomea. Mm-hmm. She's played by 
I'm probably going to butcher her last name, but I'm going to try my darndest. Her name is Daphne Patakia. Yeah, something like Sorry. that. Sorry. Um, I think what her character really symbolizes is, um, what do I have written here? She symbolizes female sexuality, temptation, acceptance, and nature, mm. which are things that Benedetta has been taught to kind of rebel against, like within the church. Like there's a line in, in the very beginning where Benedetta shows up to the convent and she's wearing this like beautiful, like silk dress, you know, nice material. And they make her change into what is basically a hay sack that yeah. she's going to wear for like the rest of her life. And she tell oh, the the nun at that time tells her, "Well, you better get used to it because your body is not something that should be pleasured. Your body is your feel enemy. pleasurable. Like, yeah, your body is is it's your the own worst. enemy. You're supposed to feel uncomfortable in it. Yeah, you should feel uncomfortable in your own body. And <laughs> like, I remember a long time ago when I met Ro, and just like every young person questioning religion, I always used to tell him because I grew up Catholic." not hardcore, but I was just like the faith that we were part of that. I always wondered why was I supposed to feel guilty for being alive? Right. Yeah. <laughs> or like this idea of that, like my, me being born is a sin. Like I don't feel that way. Right. And I think this movie, <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> I just saw something awesome. Um, <laughs> I think this movie really questions like, what if God wanted you to like have pleasure in life and not live a miserable existence? I, yeah, dude, I wrote something down. Um, I actually, somebody on Reddit said it. Um, where is it? Oh yeah. They said that finally a movie that asked the question, why can't we be horny about God? <laughs> <laughs> horny for God. Why man. doesn't God want us to be horny? You know? So it's just, it really all, it does tackle that, that thought. And it's, I don't know. I've never seen that in a movie. I like how they yossified Jesus in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it, he was a babe. <laughs> it, it was easily the most badass portrayal of Jesus I've ever seen. Oh, easily. He's, I mean, he's out here cutting off people's heads. He's slicing up serpents. He's, you know, he's telling her, he's like, go pleasure yourself for me. And now you know why we have to give spoilers for this movie. Because, yeah. I mean, dude, Jesus is like an Assassin's Creed character, like God of War or something, you know? <laughs> In the all white. <laughs> yeah. And he tucks. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jesus tucks, by the way. That really caught me off guard. Dude, that's, that's what I wanted to text that's you guys you, after the movie, is I wanted just to say, it's like, Jesus has a mangina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. God, please don't smite me down if you're listening. And I know we had talked about... Uh, at work, we you said that scene when you were watching it by yourself. You're like, I was expecting the complete opposite. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were gonna make Jesus super hung, and they said no. Like they, they were gonna give you that Doctor Manhattan moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But they're like, no, he's even too good for that. It's like, damn. damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he needs it through her. He's too otherworldly for a penis. Exactly. It's just like, damn, he's too pure. But oh my god, dude, this movie it was just all I over the place. One thing I want to mention with the like the storyline and like the whole Jesus thing, and I thought this was really interesting because this is something that people claim to have happened is uh the stigmata mm-hmm. which is having mm-hmm. a vision of christ and then uh like receiving like his wounds receiving his wounds right and i have a picture of it saved on my phone of like just an artistic rendering of that and i know you guys can't see this maybe i'll post it on the pod but or on the pod instagram but i got to show you guys look at this laser beams coming out of jesus, jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's how he did it. So hey, maybe Paul movie. Verhoeven is right with like how could I how could this movie be blasphemy if this actually yeah, happened? I said that right? this happens, yeah, and this was based off of real real city, real person, real convent. So and even the uh, even Bartolomea because she's real as well, and that is actually her name. That she, you know, she testified quote unquote that these things really did happen, and I heard it too. I mean, I couldn't see him right. because it wasn't a vision for me, but yeah, Benedetta was not lying because so basically like yeah like quick summary of this kind of plot is um oh yeah we ben, forgot to do benedetta that. <laughs> she she's a, she's a nun of this convent she's been there for almost her whole life since she was young um she kind of worked her way up and she receives visions from jesus like she is convinced that jesus is her husband like she's married to jesus through this religious you know ceremony as being a nun and she receives visions from him and And people try to discredit that and dispel what she says is to be true and then we see her receive the stigmata and it kind of turns into this whole is she lying is jesus really talking to her and it kind of you know it It even questions the whole god working in mysterious ways like maybe did she harm herself or did this actually happen and that's kind of an integral plot point that plays out later for one character who it ends up causing her demise. Yeah. The fact that she had even brought it up. Because these whole visions, I mean, it basically splits her convent down the middle. 
maybe not necessarily down the middle, but it splits them for sure. And so you see people that are accepting it, and you see people that are pushing back against Benedetta because they think what she's saying is the town is definitely willing to accept it. Accept they it, yeah. they they're calling her Santa Benedetta exactly. and stuff like that. Like she's already a saint to them. Um, hold on, real before you go. The reason I think that the town is willing to accept her so much is because this takes place during the Black Plague, mm-hmm. and for some reason, and this is this is true that. Uh, Pescia was was able to fend off the plague for whatever reason, and some of it is credited to Benedetta and her, like Jesus protecting them because they're protecting her bride and uh, protecting his bride and taking care of her and respecting mm-hmm. her and her people. Yeah, yeah. So I could see why in that time, maybe people were willing to believe something like this. With when it's as simple as like, well, nobody's getting sick, and she says she <laughs> yeah. can see God, so maybe we we are protected by her. I'm just going to say the movie just gives you so much evidence in the first five minutes, like in the whole bird scene and it, like see the virgin and, and in that scene, she's talking about a virgin, not even talking about Jesus Christ. So to me, there's so much evidence that she is enlightened through religious purposes. She is special, but there's so stuff like the, the stigmata, like did she do it herself? But then that bears the question, like, yes, in a physical form here, if Jesus made you do it, you would have to do it yourself. Right? Yeah. But like, yeah. did he manifest you grabbing something to do it? whether that's that would still literally be him manifesting it and i feel like that's where it sits it's not like they make it sound like oh well she he didn't like give it to her and they just showed up i saw her with the little piece of glass or whatever and we get evidence that the girl that she's with later at, towards the end like she catches her too with like you use this but that doesn't disqualify that jesus made her do that God works in mysterious exactly. ways, right? I, I yeah. do really like that part of the movie because, I mean, that's what I think this movie does so well is it does hold that ambiguity. There is no significant answer. You know what I mean? Like, did she do it? Did Jesus do it? Was it a mix of both? Like, we don't know. But at the end of the day, she kept the plague out of Pesha. So, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. damn. So, <laughs> Which, that's so crazy to me evidence. because there's so many yeah. scenes in the movie where you're like, this is a super spreader event now oh, that I have sure. COVID eyes and I can... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, put your mask on, fools. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this movie was... Yeah, and so that's the basic plot of the movie. And then, yeah, I mean, events happen. But I really wanted to talk about what I thought was so funny. Because like I said, this movie does... It talks about these very serious... Topics. Topics, you know, religion and Jesus and, you know, the afterlife. And then you also have, like, between the two main characters, Benedetta and Bartolomea, they have a meet cute while shitting on the toilet. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they're ripping ass Farting. on the toilet, yeah. and that's when they, like, you know, kind of hit it off. So it just, it does both sides of this movie very well. I mean, this movie starts with a bird shitting in a dude's eye who's yeah. trying, who's threatening to kill Benedetta and her family. And it's basically used as a sign of God that, you know, like, I got your back. And it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next scene is a gesture farting, throwing flames out of his yeah, eyes. Yeah, there's a lot of fart jokes in this movie, and they work. <laughs> I thought the dialogue was just really sharp and witty, and there were so many things that the characters say to each other that was just like, sick burn, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, like, there's one scene uh, to- maybe towards the middle of the movie where, um, because I'm not too familiar with like the religious aspect, they call him the nuncio. Mm-hmm. I believe he's probably like a cardinal, something yeah. along those lines, like a higher like up in the Catholic tree church under the Pope somewhere. Yeah. Right. And he's kind of in charge of, it's like a middleman, right? Yeah. Cause he's in charge of like, or like a district manager. He has to go check the cities exactly. to make sure that what's going on the is all nuncio, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And him and Benedetta have this really like sharp scene where, she offers to wash his feet, and at this point, she's already in charge of the, the convent. She's the abbess. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, well, the abbess would wash my feet. And she's like, well, when I was a, a novice, that was the other word they kept using. When I was a novice, I washed many people's feet. And then I know, like, my mom had always told me, with, like, religious stuff, that, like, this this concept of, like, Jesus washing, washing people's feet is kind of like a, a sign of, like, I'm not above anybody. It's humbling, yeah. Yeah, it's, like, humbling, right? But then the nuncio tries to turn it around on her, and he was like, you dare try to seduce me like a whore. And then Benedetta really just quick, quick-tongued, quick sharp-witted right back at him. Well, what, what would you know about how whores act? Yeah, how would you know how they act? Yeah, aren't you supposed <laughs> to be goes, this pure religious dude? <laughs> I'm going to act like I didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, and just how quickly that power can turn, that, mm-hmm. that, like, that dynamic of like, well, now I have dirt on you. And like he's taken aback by that. It was so good, man. This movie was so good. One of my favorite parts was there's a scene where the current abbess who pl- was Charlotte Rampling, sh- played yeah. by Charlotte Rampling, like we were talking about, her daughter is also a member of the convent. Mm-hmm. And her daughter, they both obviously don't like Benedetta and they think what she's doing is 
blasphemous and false, right? But the mother is obviously older, and she's been through the politics of the church, so she kind of understands, like, this is maybe something we need to keep her mouth shut, and let's see how it plays out. It doesn't matter if we know or don't know. But the daughter is, I mean, you know, being young and youthful, she's like, this is wrong, and she basically you know, confesses to the father of the convent that she thinks she lies about seeing. She does lie. She lies about Benedetta, you know, putting the stigmata on her. Seeing her. Seeing, because she lies about seeing her. Right. And she has a conversation with her mother about it. um, And her mom says, I'm not going to back you up. Mm -hmm. Like, no matter what, I'm not going to help you. And so the daughter, what's her, what's her name? Christina, I think. Yeah, Christina. Uh, yeah, in the film. So Christina, the daughter, goes ahead and they're having dinner now. And the father calls her out, and she he's like, "Do you want to go ahead and tell everybody, <laughs> yeah. you know, what you're telling me?" And she's like, oh, "Right here, right now." He's like, "Well, yeah, duh." Like you know, and so she goes and she basically says that she has seen this happen, and she looks at her mom and she says that her mom, like you know, knows the, the truth too, and her mom shuts her down. Yeah, and th- then she's forced to whip herself in front of everybody as mm-hmm. punishment. And it was just, it's just such a good fucking scene. Like, and then it leads to this crazy scene, in, like on a visual level yep. of this comet hanging over the church and like the sky is red. It literally looks like hell is so opened sick. up. Right. And, yeah. And because then the town is all, they're basically, they're scared and they're saying like, this is a sign that the plague is going to come. It's a bad omen or something bad is going to happen. And Benedetta is like, no, this is a sign that God will protect us. And then Christina, the girl who was kind of humiliated in front of everybody, jumps off the roof of the convent and kills herself. Very similar to the midsummer moment when the yes, old guy, yeah, <laughs> he jumps off the roof or well, not off the off the side of the cliff. Sorry. And and then Charlotte Rampling is like climbing up the stairs trying to get to her daughter before she does, and she sees it happen, and it's such a harrowing scene. But oh my god, it was just so good. Like, yeah, I think what's crazy about all that scene, you say that, and I think. The next scene that follows all of that is um, Benedetta and her going into like her room, and then she asked her um, that she was getting off at her whipping herself. Oh, Bartolomea tells Benedetta she's like, "I saw that you enjoyed that." Yeah, like, and her, she's like, you you think, "Because I was thinking of you." And that's why I think it's that's where this film does the the heavy stuff that you guys are talking about these themes that is questioning and the religious purposes behind it. But then there's that love romance that they have and how that's forbidden and just has the best of both sides honestly yeah. like <laughs> it, it starts to get very uh graphic um we we realized with benedetta like early in the film that she is kind of spiteful mm-hmm. even for being so like holier than thou and she being is. the bride of jesus and all of that she does many things in this film to harm other people and i think it's because she has that hubris of I'm the bride of Jesus, and, like, I can dole out punishment as I please, even though I'm not their superior. One of the – this I like that you brought that up because when she – I think she's talking to the abbess at this point. Yeah. And she's telling her, like – she's explaining why she made somebody do something that harmed them. And oh, she, she says – Since we're doing spoilers, when she meets Bartolomea and Bartolomea fucks up uh, the bobbits for yeah. the sewing oh, material. yeah. She makes her reach into boiling, boiling hot, hot water, water and to pull up, pull them out like she's bobbing for apples. Like burn her hand. flesh off. Yeah. <laughs> and so then she's talking to the abbess. She's like, why did you make her do that? And she says, well, God, like you learn through pain and suffering. And she's like, your own pain, not other people's. Like yeah. you can't dish it out on other people because that doesn't help you. Like, you know what I mean? It's not your place. So, it, you know, just another like. So we get multiple scenes of that too. We, do. we get the, the, and it, it's. It's worst case scenario ending is someone killing themselves. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about is Charlotte Rampling's character. Like her, the interesting character dynamic that she has is that she's this abbess and she's says like, this is the path I've chosen. Even if you think it's ridiculous to her daughter, because we get the realization that she's not even religious and she doesn't she, even she believe doesn't in even any of this. She doesn't even believe in it. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. She's just doing it for the politics basically, because this is a decision that she made. Yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, not to get too like political here or like woke or whatever, but what else was a woman really going to do at that time to have a position of power unless she's like a queen or a princess or something, right? So I just think this is a way for her to have some like credibility, credibility in the world, yeah, and power, and like she can at least protect she the girls that are around by her. people in the town. Yes, yes that's she is, point. and I mean. But these times sucked, obviously, because Dude. even like the character of Bartolomea, like her situation, the way she gets to the convent in it's the first horrible. place is she's trying yeah, to seek terrible. refuge from an abusive father who and brothers. has lost. Yeah, and brothers yeah. who have um, 
her father had lost the uh, his wife, and so he starts using Bartolomea as his wife, and that's really the most I want to say about yeah. that. Like, I'm not going to get into the graphics it. of it, it, but that's what she's trying to escape. And, and he basically sells her off for the price of what? A good dog, good dog is dog. what he says. Yeah, yeah because um, Benedetta sees her, and I, I just think she's infatuated with her from the very beginning because she's so different from Benedetta. So, like, at this time, Benedetta's parents are visiting when it happens, and... Um, she asks her dad, who he must be some kind of like eh, some lord, he baron has type of dude. Yeah, he's got money. Yeah. Um, she asks him to pay for uh, Bartolomeo, like that. Her, Benedetta's family will cover it, yeah. and they are able to. And you just see the like the awfulness of that time, just that you see a quick exchange for a person's life. Yeah. Right there, just within two minutes, and <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he walks in there. Other than that, his wiping your ass with hay. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> He walked in there chasing his daughter, and then I'll, I don't have a daughter anymore. Yeah, twenty for twenty bones. I'll go huh? get a dog. Twenty scuderi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the politics in this movie, though, I think that's one of the big things that really plays, and like how even how you can just manipulate power, and all of a sudden. I know the, the Twitter take on this is like Benedetta is about how hot girls should be able to do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, and that's kind of what we see is that for religious purposes, it is good for the church to kind of like promote Benedetta as a saint. Because I mean, at this time, if I was like the nuncio or one of the other fathers, I think it'd look good on my resume if, oh yeah, by the way, we have this one nun and she's got visions of God. Yeah, like Jesus does talk to her. Like yeah. we're the shit, you know what I mean? But yeah, especially in these times where I think there's so many different religious things going on and so many different types of faith and stuff like that, that having a, a saint on your side is pretty helpful yeah, in the fight. I would agree. It built up credibility that church or that group of nuns in that city. And because the black plague is going around everywhere, they're so willing to listen to like whatever the religious people that are there are saying. And so I think her being like having those visions and then proving it, like all of those things that we see where her voice changes and stuff. I think that to them proves it that obviously because there's no logical explanation at that time as to why someone would be able to do something like that. And I think that to them makes it seem like, well, she's obviously the it's one real. thing that Benedetta can do that is unexplainable is the voice where when things start going like too haywire and she's feel like the pressure's on and her back, back is against the wall. She like Jesus's voice he, like possesses comes her. through her. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, she's possessed, but by Jesus and he's calling them blasphemers and like, Heretics. how dare you? Yeah. Like question my wife. Harlots. And, and yeah. And those things are badass. They're so fucking cool. I had to make the meme of use the voice. Use the voice. And I put a picture of Jesus <laughs> over, <laughs> over the mom from the dude. Betty, yeah. The Betty Jesuit. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, man, I, I'm kind of at a loss for words because I don't know if I'm smart enough to understand every like small religious thing that's happening, but I, I was just blown away by this movie. I was too. This is, I think this is a movie like, at least for me, I would love to watch it again. I mm -hmm. think that you could probably pick up on some stuff maybe that you didn't see the first time. Um, but yeah, I think man. it will have you questioning every time. Is this real? Is this fake? Yeah. Because there are certain things that you, there is no logical explanation for them. And I told Roe, like, as a non-religious person, if someone was using <laughs> a voice like that, how can I explain that in a way that makes sense? I might have to throw my hands up and be like, that's unexplainable to me in, like, mm -hmm. a, in a logical sense. Exactly. Because there are things, like, there is evidence that she did hurt herself, that she wounded herself to kind of, like, you know, promote the stigmata. But then, like you said, there are also instances where... It was none of her doing. Like the bird that shit on the guy's face. There's a that could be a coincidence, a, but what are the chances? There's a right? statue of Mary that, when she's praying to as a little girl, like falls and literally it like hangs her. an inch right before her face, and somehow doesn't kill her. And then we get our first instance that Benedetta has interest in women because she tries to suck the titty of the yeah. virgin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that. laughs> Which I couldn't tell if that was like a sexual thing, but I kind of thought it was maybe she trying to show infant. that innocence of yeah. like, a, a, yeah, the mother, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And like breastfeeding from the mother. But <laughs> that was, a, that was a trippy scene. I could understand why people would be mad. Yeah. Defiling the Virgin <laughs> the Mary. But what I wanted to say before I get off that is that that's our first instance that Charlotte Rampling and her daughter are not falling for Benedetta's yeah. shit because the daughter asks, like, is that really a miracle? And um, 
the abbess charlotte rampling is like there are things that are unexplainable that aren't miracles she says something along mm-hmm. those lines and I, I didn't say it as poetically i'm butchering it but just that like there's false miracles that happen all the time just because she wasn't crushed by it's the like statue not every miracle mean. is created by god like, yeah, yeah i think that's it yeah yeah but it just lays that seed early in the movie that like just because there's these things happening doesn't mean i still believe in it and then you find out it's because she's not religious in the first place mm-hmm. so all of this of doesn't course even she has the doubt yeah. yeah of course I think it's there's an interesting fact how everybody in this movie uses Jesus talking to them as an like an excuse to do something, but she's the only one we have evidence that it happens to. Because when the what's the name of the um, the guy that ends up coming to the city, the nuncio, because he he has like power supposedly over that ministry, that nuns, right? And it's because Jesus has him in a position and that but then they don't want to open the doors to them because they're like well she told us that like yeah you're gonna let the play again and to not let anybody in and she's chosen by jesus and it's just that is how gullible everything was like well jesus told me and people were like well why would you lie about that right and then for him to go into the city and have and bring the plague into the city yeah yeah like just further proof she was because she was right right to not let anybody in. And then the one person that they let in because they were talking about religion and like, oh, well, Jesus wants us to come in if you love, like, let us in. So they let him in and she brought the plague. So there's but always the, evidence. But the thing is, though, this is where the ambiguity starts to come in is that one of the sisters already has the plague. But is it from visiting, from visiting what, him? Yakoba? The sister uh, Yakoba yeah. or whatever? Yeah. They, oh, yeah. Her, uh, On her breast. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's like leaking all over the bed yeah. or something like that. And they have to hide her and separate her from so the rest of the So that's what I was trying to figure. Did you, was that the plague or was it something I else? mean, I'm going to assume it's it the as? plague okay. because it, the, the sores and like the lumps yeah. and all that look very similar to, well, like we said, spoiler alert, that yeah. the nuncio has the plague and so does the original abbess. Yeah. She has it too. Sister Felicia. Though, that's whatever. what I yeah. wasn't sure of though, is if that lady had the plague. I mean, what else would it yeah. be? It was right? up in the air for me, but yeah, I could, I could definitely see that because they did keep her away and yeah, I could see that. And that's what I meant about that super spreader shit because when they finally turn on Benedetta and they have her trial and then they are going to burn her at the stake. Before we move on, before we, before we get to that, I got a, I was watching an interview with Verhoeven before we did this and he was saying that just a little history lesson um, lesbian sex at that time, like if you go back to the 1500s, you could be burned at the stake for it, mm-hmm. right? But then by the time the Benedetta story happened, it was only um, like a burnable offense <laughs> if you were to use a toy or a dildo or something oh. like that. And there's an object in this movie. Let's not give that away, yeah. what the object is, but there's an object that is used for penetration. Yeah. <laughs> And that is the reason why they keep looking she's for it. like eligible to be burned right. is because of that specifically. That's why the nuncio wants evidence of the That's, yeah had to because that it. way they can get rid of her. And it's less it's a less punishable offense if it would have just been sex between two people. But the whole adding a toy aspect to it so weird <laughs> because I guess in that Judith Brown book there's like a couple pages about like the role that sex toys played in that. Very interesting. Mm. And that one of the reasons Benedetta in real life even wanted to ascend to power was that so she could have a, a room to herself. That's literally, that was my joke. I literally joked about that when we yeah. left the movie. I was like, she literally like used the word of God to Just allow her herself room. to eat, you know. To get some puss. To eat box in the biggest <laughs> bed in the room, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man. Um, <laughs> I just can't believe that Paul Verhoeven is 83. And this is what's coming out of He's his... like, this is what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. He said in that same interview that the thing is, is that in a non-religious aspect, he's very intrigued by the his, the historical, like, character of Jesus. Hmm. Like, not in a not in a spiritual sense. Right. But just that if he really existed, like, what was his impact, really? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, that's crazy that there may have been a guy who... <laughs> claimed he because, was Jesus. Yeah, you by, know? by all accounts, there was a dude, there was Jesus. Yeah. Who was he? That's what that's up for debate. So that's cool. No, this movie was, I, I really liked it. I have this interesting excerpt that um, I found on IMDb. It says, it's just like a fact, an interesting fact. It says, there is plenty of sex and nudity, but all the actors said in the interviews that they were unfazed. The star, Vera, believes sexuality is an interesting subject. These aren't, that not many directors know how to film. Paul, 
has known from the beginning and is somehow is someone who has dealt with this, this major topic in an amazing way. Nudity is of no interest when it's not depicted in a beautiful way. That's not what Paul does. Everything was very <laughs> joyful when we stripped off our clothes. Daphne P- Patakia, who plays Sister Bartolomeo, concurred. You forget these are naked bodies. I have the impression that even in Paul's other films, these scenes where people are nude or making love, well, they speak reams. And then she keeps on going on like how she's just really comfortable to do it with him and they don't even see it as that when they're filming under him. I think it's so funny that she says he doesn't do it a certain way, but she must have not seen Showgirls. <laughs> 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 because there's the, the scene of Elizabeth Berkeley and Kyle McLaughlin having sex in the pool and they're splashing around and they're going like that. It's like the most unrealistic sex scene you could ever see and that's like the satire just pushed through the roof, right. you know? But... I just think it's funny because no, like, maybe you haven't seen Showgirls. I mean, this movie. You might have a different opinion. As a compared to like Showgirls and this, <laughs> yeah. obviously, I think uh, maybe she meant more for this movie, the way he's going to film this movie. But yeah. she obviously hasn't seen She's like, Show he doesn't Girls. do that. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could be like a, sure com- about a comfortability yeah. thing. You sure about that? <laughs> you sure about that's why? <laughs> but no, I mean, this movie, like, this movie did have a lot of nudity and, you know, sex in it. And I felt, but I felt like he did do a good job. Like, it could have been way more vulgar than it was. Oh, you know? I mean, yeah. but he he did a good job balancing it. It definitely is out there in I, terms of like sex scenes in a movie. You know those Europeans. Yeah, <laughs> this was a French film. But. I think that is. I mean, honestly, I think that is one of the reasons is that America sensibilities are so babyish. I'll say like, oh, whoa, well, got sex. That's like that's like it. That almost goes back to our previous video when we were talking about. Um, uh, liquor's pizza like everybody's up in arms because you know a 15 year old and 25 year old kiss but you have all this r- racism and all this other stuff and why do we freak out when it comes to sex yeah you know what i mean like there's this huge big weird cloud over sex in america and it can't be talked about yeah i mean i don't know why when you random fact but like in japan they have those bath bathhouses that are public where hundreds of people are naked in front of each yeah. other and it's no big deal because yeah. it's like well these are just our bodies yeah like, it is what it is so yeah yeah. I mean, and because of, of <laughs> I can't believe I'm going down this rabbit hole, but because America is founded in such a like religious image, I'm not surprised that we still are so it's such a taboo. Yeah, it's so taboo to see two naked people on the screen. Yeah, you know? I got to be honest. I'm. <laughs> this is gonna be so funny. What a self report. I used to not really care for sex scenes in movies, but hey, maybe Benedetta changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of the time, um, the sex scenes almost feel like they're unneeded. Like, it's just, like, you threw it in there to have people have sex. Like, this, it called for it. Yeah, Verhoeven did say, because someone asked him, how do you feel about sex in movies? Do you feel it's necessary? And he was like, well, what's necessary? Is it even necessary to make movies? You know? Like, I know he kind of just debate lorded them with that tactic, but. It's necessary if you make it necessary. Like, did this have a point? This, it really did. I gotta be honest. When I've made that point about not liking sex scenes in movies, I think it's because I've seen, um, what is it? It's the Nicholas Rogue film. Is it called Don't Look Now? I might be butchering the name, but it's like a, it's like a horror thriller type of movie about people who lost their children and kind of has like a, it's, it's like an early beta version of hereditary kind of right. And there's a long, uncomfortable sex scene in that movie. And it's got these weird jump cuts. I honestly think that's why I, I said it Maybe. that day. I'd seen that movie and I was like, I don't like sex <laughs> <in> movies. <laughs> I think it's because I was like, these two people, I'm finding them very unattractive. It's the 70s. It just looks gross. No thanks. No I thanks. But hey, Benedetta, you've opened my mind. Yeah. Ooh. The movie. Yeah. Jesus. The movie is hot. And <laughs> if you are a, a child and listening to this, you should not be listening to this. And yeah. You definitely do not see this movie. Yeah, for real. <laughs> no, this was this was a very mature movie. It yeah. was. It was a very mature movie. I thought this movie was shot really well, too. It was beautiful, yeah. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. The colors that we were talking about, like when the comet is there, and then also when it shows just Jesus being on the cross. That was, yeah. That like, it's such a cool. wide shot. Her dream sequences are what are really... Intense. Is, is really when that stuff comes out and like, okay, we're letting loose with the visuals right here. Um, I know we had kind of compared this movie. It's not too similar but like saint mod right mm-hmm. yeah. which is another movie that we really like i really like i love that i know okay you guys do yeah, too i know really. ro did um Come on. It, it just felt so different from saint mod even though they're both kind of the Deal same with this similar. idea of like someone being a saint or being able to have to talk to god yeah but they're portrayed in very different ways very. yeah like saint mod in uh since we're doing spoilers fuck it i'm gonna talk about that movie too but in St. Maude, Jesus is portray- or God is portrayed as a cockroach that she speaks mm-hmm. to. And like this movie is the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So even when they are using God for their own gain, they still have like a love and respect for the like 
for their faith, you know? They do. And in St. Maude, it's like, yeah, it's got a very true. evil twist it, to it. It was very dark. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I really liked about this movie was, um, what was I going to say? Oh, that, did you notice like most of her visions came at like her, mo- her most horniest times? <laughs> yeah. Like her visions yeah. came when she was super horny. And I, I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> it's just the facts, man. It this is. all happened. Another, another a- aspect of this movie. And I think I brought this up on the last dual episode, it, what it reminded me of. And so does St. Maude. I just... I, is the whole Joan of Arc thing. They mentioned Joan of Arc in this they movie. And St. Maude is very similar, like with the character of Maude kind of being like Joan of Arc. I just think that she's such a historical like icon. That's just, that's just like a well people want to pick from all the time. Because one of the torture devices they use in this movie, Jesus. they even say that this is what they used on Joan of Arc. And even her, she squealed after fucking... After we were done with yeah, her so with this. Don't try to be braver than Joan so of Arc. So don't try to be braver than Joan of Arc. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. You've always talked about the Joan of Arc movie, That's right? That's like my favorite historical story. Verhoeven was going to, is thought about working on that, like making one of those. No, nah, like I'm working on it. That's the movie like, we're going to write. <laughs> like that and the Wendigo movie. I thought it was <laughs> interesting, <laughs> dude. But that, because you've, I've always remembered you talking about the Joan of Arc. Why haven't they made it's a Joan so of Arc It's so interesting. Movie? I mean, I think it's because it's considered, the, the black and white one is such a classic movie. It's a silent era movie. I know David Lowry was talking about that movie inspiring the Green Knight. You know, this movie, Benedetta, um, St. Maude. I just think that Joan of Arc is a something people like to pick from because it's such a crazy story. Even it's so similar, someone having visions from God, yep. right? Yeah. Um, what do you think? You guys want to keep going? No, I think no? We're good. you guys are ready to wrap it up? Yeah, I think we're probably good. All right, let me just check my notes really quick. I want to make sure I didn't leave out anything I really wanted to say. I There was an interesting, I guess, topic of discussion that I brought up to you, Nate, that it's interesting we don't see her parents anymore after she starts to become very highly regarded. Yeah, we did see her parents a lot in the beginning of the film, and they visited her at the convent. Um, but, yeah, after, for whatever reason, once she kind of takes this big religious, um, like, uh, you know, after everything turn. happened. Yeah, turn. Yeah. Um, she becomes like a prominent figure and we just, yeah, we don't see her parents anymore. So that's, that was a question that I had after you brought it up. I didn't think about it, but yeah, I don't know what happened to her parents. Um, one last thing I really want to mention is how the nuncio totally gets his at the end. Yeah. Right. I mean, like was, it, it all backfires yep. on him, which is like something we often talk about is like, how come in certain instances where it's like, why don't the people just fight back? Like, mm-hmm. I know that's an easy soft brain thing to say, like you should just fight back. But yeah. in this instant, it fucking it worked. Right? They, did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they were going to burn her at the stake. And then it got revealed that the Nuncio had the black plague and the town fucked him up. It's cause she gets, she gets the voice right before, cause she gets to talk right before she, they, uh, they try her. to burn her at the stake. And then yeah. she basically gets the stigmata again. Or yeah. like, and then she gets, she gets the voice. See in that instance, it's like how, but she, she had done she it. had done it right but, but where how where right? and how because the in a logistical point like standpoint how would she be able to cut her hands if she was if tired. her hands are behind her back and all the guards are behind her you know like they would easily be able to see if she had a weapon and that's where i think you've brought it up that you get the we get the evidence later that she did do it herself but is that did god did jesus do that for her whether she has that like she physically did it herself who knows but did Jesus do that? Because yeah. it just makes no you know sense. That, do you know that story about, like, why, why didn't you save me? Oh, I sent you a lifeboat? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of yeah, similar exactly. to that, right? Oh, man. I, um, yeah. Oh, one thing I did want to mention was tw- at the end of the movie, uh, it's kind of got a happy ending, I, I guess. Yeah. I don't really... I wouldn't say happy. In a way. It could have yeah, been, 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 been a lot worse. She didn't die. She did not die. Um, is that... As like Stand By Me or many of the other classic movies, it had the text <laughs> at the end yeah. talking about how they went on living the rest of their lives, and right? Was happily ever after. <laughs> and it was just her walking away towards the. I thought that was All like very traditional, like, yeah. yeah, or very westerny, I, right? I like definitely uh, would have stayed in that, that, that in that F shack with uh, Bartolome. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that they say that Benedetta Carlini lived out the rest of her days in the convent where she was imprisoned. It's not like it was a, she was kind of like on house arrest, yeah. right? She just kind of had to stay in the convent. This whole saint shit was over, but on a few occasions she was allowed to eat with her fellow sisters, but she was required to sit on the floor and that she lived to be 70 years old, which at that time is fucking crazy. It's really old. And that the plague never made it to Pescia. Yeah. And that just further questions like, well, how, if you're faking this whole thing, right? Yeah. But <laughs> this movie leaves me asking so many questions and I, I love that. I mean, 
and some movies like Prisoners of the Ghost Land yeah. that you did not like. Yeah. You know, the questions were un- being unanswered for you was a that was it was problem. to its detriment. That you know what I mean? Problem. And with this one, is in the it's in the best way where I'm like, oh, I just gotta watch this again. Because exactly. I have a feeling I might see it different ways every time I watch it. Most likely. Yeah. Definitely. This is a banging film. Um yeah, like like we were talking about, don't know if it's necessarily for everybody. This is a movie that might, you know, rub some people the wrong way, but it if, might be too much. If you're into some weird shit, this is really fucking Yeah, let's good. see how weird shit you... Let's see how much weird shit you really like, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is a, a barometer for weirdness. So, but like I said, it, it wasn't done in distaste. It was a beautifully shot movie. The writing was really good. Acting was incredible. Cinematography was beautiful. Like, he knew what he was doing, and I think he executed on the movie that he wanted to make. So... Yeah. That was shout well, out. 100%. Well, shout agree. out, yeah. So... Time for the code word for this episode. Oh my god! I don't know. Hot nuns. <laughs> hot nuns. I like Do hot that. Nuns. Hot nuns. Yeah. Hot nuns with hot buns. What did, right? What, yeah. did you, uh, <laughs> what do you guys rate this movie? I gave it a five. Like yeah. I told you in the licorice pizza episode, I'm handing them out, dude. I'm, this year is very much getting me. <laughs> I honestly, I can't decide whether or not I want to give this a four and a half or a five. So I don't know. I'm gonna give it four, seven, five. <laughs> yeah, four, seven, five. I don't know. I have this in a four and a half too. Four and a half. Yeah. This was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, makes you think it, 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 it does make you think like, you know, have you seen that succession meme from the, like one of the latest episodes? Like, what are you a sicko? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about Benedetta. Like yeah. maybe I'm a sicko. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause it really doesn't seem like this is getting a whole lot of uh, attention um, or at least the attention that I know that we think it probably deserves. And I, that's kind of why we wanted to do the spoilers because I think sometimes with the spoilers episodes is that if we explain what's going on and it's like, what are you guys talking about? That it might interest you to go see it a little yeah, more. Cause even with all the spoilers that we gave you, I mean, we did not give you everything and that really doesn't even put into per- perspective, like the, uh, the weight of this movie, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, so DM us, hot nuns at the Grand Cinema Hotel <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Comment. Loving the interactions. Loving the feedback. Yeah, hit us with some blasphemy, man. Let us, let <laughs> yeah, us tell me how I'm a blasphemer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for checking into the Grand Cinema Hotel. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.